Hi guys. So this is Cruise in the World with Jackie and I'm Jackie and I talk about whatever travel I'm doing, whether it be a cruise, a boat, an RV. Um, this week we're going to talk all about the carnival magic at the Port of Norfolk. And this is all you want to know about the Port of Norfolk. And let me just say before I booked this cruise, I booked it very last minute. Um, some of our travel plans had changed and we needed to get away. So we booked this. It was super cheap. Um, and even though Norfolk is the closest port to my house, it's about two hours and 15 minutes. We had never flown. We had never gone out of there. They hadn't, um, of course, COVID, but even before COVID, they had stopped for a little while. And so I went on YouTube and tried to find people who had experiences through Norfolk. And I found very, very few. And, and the few that I found, probably less than five, and they were all before COVID. They were like three years ago. Um, so I didn't think they were very valid. So I asked on Facebook, I got different answers, but nothing I could confirm. Um, so this is the 411 of going out of Norfolk. So, um, I went out on May 30th, which happens to be Memorial Day. Now that freaked me out because this is a Navy town, right? Norfolk Naval Base. Um, the whole town is a Navy town and I made the assumption that not only is it a holiday weekend, but it is a military holiday that there would be parades and streets shut down, um, and all of that. And that was not true. The traffic itself was simple. Um, in fact, coming back yesterday on the 4th, it was much more crowded. The roads were more packed than Memorial Day. So just an FYI. But what that did mean was, is the hotels were packed and we could have drove that morning. It's two hours, 15, two minutes, two hours, half the most. Uh, but we have to go over the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, which connects the Eastern Shore to the mainland of Virginia. And that bridge can close. It'll close if it's windy. Um, if there's an accident, it's only, you know, two lanes each way. It will shut down. And my fear, I know it's kind of probably... Uh, too much of a worrier, but I was worried that if it shuts down, um, we're screwed. We can't get there in time because, um, if we don't go that way, we have to go up through Annapolis all the way around DC back down and around. It would probably, if we got all the way to the bridge tunnel and found out that, uh, it was closed, it would add eight hours probably. Yeah. Two hours, yeah, it would probably add about eight hours, um, and we would miss our cruise. So we went, we wanted to go the night before, but it was Memorial Day, and even though um, we didn't see any uh, holiday activities, there was a concert, a big festival uh, downtown Norfolk that weekend. In addition, Virginia Beach is right there, so you got the beach. You got the start of summer. You've got this festival. The, the hotels were pretty much booked. And the ones that weren't booked that I could get um, a room, it was more than what I paid for the cruise. So I looked and I looked and I looked. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I looked and I looked and I looked. And I finally found one over in Ocean View, which... Um, the morning of it cost, took us like 15 minutes, um, to get to the parking. Um, so it wasn't bad. It's a nice area. I will, um, shortly have a review on that hotel, but there were several in that area. It's right on the Bayside beach. So it's not on the ocean, but it's on the bay. It has a nice beach area. Um, there were a couple reasonable ones. The one I stayed at was the Bay Inn. 
Um, somebody else I was talking to extensively on Facebook was staying at the Super 8, which is down the road. It was a nice area and it was fairly reasonable. Um, I have to be honest, one of the concerns was that I found some that were cheaper. The reviews were just hideous. And, you know, I stay at Motel 6. I don't care. If it's overnight, I don't really care. If I don't have, if I'm just going to bed and getting up the next morning like I was doing, I don't care. But the, the uh, reviews on some of these were just hideous. Um, like one out of five and, you know, from the fact they were dirty or they were in a part of town they didn't want to be in and there was criminal activity going on. I mean, they're really bad reviews. Um, and then when I posted on Facebook, if anybody had any ideas, um, there were people who said, stay out of this section, stay out of this section. So just do your research if you're going to go the night before. To be quite honest, if uh, the area downtown, Sheridan, Hilton, which are all like a couple blocks away, right down on the waterfront, if they hadn't been 300 and some dollars a night, I probably would have stayed there. But I just thought that was outrageous. Um, so it is what it is. I am a budget traveler. I've always said that. All right, so let's get into the meat of it. So um, finally, I found this hotel. It was lovely. There will be a review and some pictures and stuff coming up shortly. Um, the Port of Norfolk. This is my 24th cruise, and it was the worst experience I've ever had. Just putting it out there. Would it stop me from going again? No. But uh, let's talk about what I would change. So the biggest problem with Norfolk, let's just start. The problem with Norfolk is they don't do this year round. There are cruise shops, cruise ships like the Norwegian Joy that actually stop at Norfolk for the day. Um, and there's the American Constitution, which actually I have a little video short on that if you're interested um, in my cruise uh, playlist. But they stop there for the day, but this carnival, the carnival magic is the only one, um, that goes out of there that, you know, departs and comes back from there. So, and they don't do it year round. So the problem with that is, is that you hire people for, I don't know, I think it's like two months in the spring and then two months in the fall, but they can't be, I'm sure they're not the same people. Nobody can work four months a year, right? And it's only two days a week. So you can't do that. So I'm sure they're hiring temporary people in the spring and then a whole new set of people temporary in the fall. So that's part of the problem, I'm sure. All right, so let's get back with the number one problem. Will I go to Norfolk again? Yes. Will I ever park in that parking lot again? No. <laughs> So this is the only port I've ever been to that doesn't have on-site parking. Now, I say that, but we went out of San Diego. We stayed at the hotel right across the street. I'm not sure about their parking. Maybe they don't, but we didn't have to deal with it. But this is the only one that I've had to deal with. I've gone from New York down to Florida. They all had on-site parking. Um, and when I mean on-site parking, I mean next to the port, a block away, two blocks away, somewhere that um, it, that you could take your luggage, the porter would take it right there, and you'd walk a block, maybe two blocks at the most, and get right on the ship. Norfolk's parking is called, I've got notes, guys, because I want to make sure I get this right for you guys. It's called Cedar Grove Parking Lot. Um... It is supposed to be secured, and it's about, they say, 14 blocks away. I don't think it's longer than that, but it might just be that the way you have to go and come, you know, might be one-way streets or something. It might be a little longer, but it's called Cedar Grove Parking. It costs $15 a night, um, so it costs me $75 for my trip. My trip was from a Monday to a Saturday. Like I said, I just got off of it. The only thing I can say about this is it was horrendous. <laughs> Absolutely horrendous. Now, 
Um, after talking to people on the cruise, I didn't have it as bad as some others did. From the time I pulled into the parking lot and got in the line to the time I stepped off of the shuttle bus, it was an hour and a half. I talked to people that had two hours and above. That's crazy. Sorry, it's crazy. So, here are some alternatives. Now, I'm going to be upfront with you. These are not ones that I personally did. But after researching and talking to people on the ship, and there was a Facebook group for ours, and I asked people to confirm that they actually used these and everything was good, and they told me it was. So what I'm going to tell you is I have alternatives here, but just like I'm going to do, I suggest you research. If you pick one of these other options, you research it before you go. If I had more than a week, I probably would have planned a little better, um, but I also want to see how this went. So let me say one more thing about it. It's supposed to be secured, but unless there's a travel, you know, a security guard there overnight, you could walk right into it. So I'm assuming they have security there. My car was fine. Um, so just FYI. All right, here's the alternatives that I've come up with that people have confirmed they used and it was good. So the first one is the Dominican, Dominic, Dominion Tower Garage. Um, it was $65 for the same one I 75. So it's slightly less expensive. Um, it's about a 10 minute walk. So, uh, you know, depending on how much luggage you might not want to walk that you might want to get an Uber, but that's an option right down by the cruise. There's the Sheridan, and the Hilton. They're right on the waterfront. I could see the Sheridan. It was a block and a half, maybe two blocks. Maybe not even that much. Um, they have a parking garage. Now, I both confirm with these people who stayed at these and then left their car there. And people who didn't even stay there and they had no problem parking there and picking up their car and everything was good. Okay. One of the things that I might do is I might go to a Norfolk airport hotel and do a park and fly uh package you know where they let you park for the whole duration cost you a little bit more but um i might do that i originally looked for a cruise and uh park and there were none of them um in norfolk Probably because this, you know, they don't go out there that very often and it they just started back. Maybe by the time we go back, they'll have a cruise and park um, somewhere and do their own shuttle. I don't know. But I might do the Norfolk Airport, either park in their parking lot and Uber over or do a hotel um, on a park and fly, even though I'm not flying, package and Uber over. Um, I don't. I, none of them had shuttles to the port. That might change if the magic stays around long enough. Who knows? That might change, but it wasn't an option. Okay. So there are different, there are a couple of different ones that I have verified through other people. If I'm going again, I will double check these personally, and I suggest you do too. But there are some options. If you are local, by all means, get somebody to drop you off. Um, I wouldn't get in the mess of pulling into the circle and dropping you off. I would have them drop you off a block away and you get your stuff out and, and just wheel down to um, the entrance. Actually, I sat at dinner with someone who did that. Her sister just dropped her off like a, less than a block away, pulled over, let her out. And she just walked down and she, had, you know, had, a, a, you know, it was fine. So that's just a suggestion I have for you. Okay. So once we got to the port, I told you it was an hour and a half from, an hour from when I pulled in to, I was dropped off on the shuttle. So when you pull in, um, 
they you're in a line when you get to the top of the line they take your bags the porter and they just put it on whatever bus and it goes and then you see it's your room um and then the next person swipes your credit cards they took all the major credit cards and you park then you waited in a long line to get on the shuttle once i got on the shuttle um we still when we got up to the port there were a line of buses and they were still at this time it was 11 30 they were still putting people that were leaving the boat the ship one so that tells you a little bit about leaving the ship which we'll get to in a minute but um go get in line the lines were long i'm gonna put i'm gonna have another video about um day one and you can look at them if you want. Um, I may also put just a couple um, at the end of this video so you can see. But um, it was a line, a long line to get through security. Um, and then once we got through security, though, the line um, that checked all your documents, gave you your boarding pass, wasn't too bad. So that a whole experience from the time we got off from the shuttle to the time we got on board was an hour. I've had quicker, I've had longer, um, of that part of it. But let me just tell you, I was on my feet the whole time. So there was no, uh, waiting for security. There's no, um, chairs or anything. Um, so if you have, um, mobility issues or standing issues, just, just be aware of that. One of the problems was, is I had a, I, I booked the week before, like I said, super deal. I'll talk about that in a, another video about this trip, but, um, I had a two thirty check-in time, which is very late, of course. And when I got there, uh, by the time we got off the bus, it was almost 12 and they're like, um, I was, we were going to check out somewhere else. There's a Nautilus museum right there. Um, there are Navy stuff everywhere. We were going to check out other stuff, but they're like, I oh, know everybody can check in. That's where I think all of Norfolk goes wrong. They have these processes and they're not following them. So, you know, like 12 o'clock, they're telling everybody to go in. Well, of course, then they're going to have lines. So anyway, um, that was an hour. The people were very friendly. Uh, I cannot say, you know, they, we didn't have any unpleasant people in the port, which you always seem to have somebody who's a little, you know, surly or something, but these people weren't, um, they were all seemed to, you know, enjoy their jobs, uh, friendly, chatty. Um, so that was going to the boat in the boat. One thing I can tell you was good by the time I got on, the um, rooms were available. And I did get in, in before 2.30. So, you know, it's still just a little aggravating process, the whole parking lot. Uh, just avoid the parking lot. If you can do anything to avoid the parking lot, that's what I tell you to do. The other thing you could do, and I saw some people did it, and it would cut out some aggravation, is park at the parking lot and call yourself an Uber. You could park at the parking lot. You could give the guy, you know, you could go on the line. So when you go on the line, they would take your luggage. You could pay for the parking and then you could call an Uber and just, you know, go outside the parking lot, um, you know, half block and wait for the Uber. That might be a, a good thing. You would avoid the line waiting to get on the shuttle bus and then all the shuttle bus mess. So that's an option too. All right, so on the way back, the shuttle and the parking was not as bad uh, going back, so I don't really have any complaints about that at all. What I do have, um, I hate to say the complaints because I had a wonderful cruise, but it's just frustrating when other ports do this so much better. But here's the deal with the getting off the ship. The last express person got off at 1043. Yes, 
and 43. I got off. I had luggage tag number seven. I got off at 945. Why is that? It's all backwards. I was going to say nasty word, but it's all backwards. Um, so they call, if you're doing express and you're taking all that luggage off, which I could never do anyway. I'm too old. Um, it's too much of a pain for me. Okay. Maybe I should pack a little better and then I, we could do that, but, um, we weren't going to do that. So, um, but the expresses were called by uh, muster stations and they have muster stations a like I, i'm not really sure but there's like a one two three i think at least and then b uh three four i don't know there's a bunch there's like three or four on every letter so a has three b has three then you go c d e all the same um, when they called my luggage tag, well, just a minute before they had called luggage tags one through five, which I'm pretty sure that's the diamond platinum suites. So, okay. That makes sense. You could still do that while you're doing express, right? Their priority. But about three minutes later, they called all the luggage tags from one to 10. 10 groups at one time. And by that time, they had only called the muster stations A's and A and B. There were still C, D, E. These people all want the express. Um, so we get, I, we even waited. I went to the bathroom um, and then we headed down. So we probably waited about at least five, 10 minutes after they called luggage one through 10. It was still just a madhouse, like congested like crazy. And I have to say this because it, it, it just shocked me. They, we get down there and they, compl they basically said, we're sorry for the confusion that people won't listen to what's being called. No, sorry cruise director, Ryan, you were really good. You were really funny, but that's not what happened. What happened was, is that you didn't follow any other process I've ever seen. Why are you calling 10 groups at one time and not expect a congestion? Also, people who have express should be called before the people that just have regular luggage tags. Like it should be going probably express and the priority one through five and then start at six after express are out but that didn't happen i got off an hour before the express people got off that makes no sense sorry you guys got to work on that um there's no reason why you can't call a couple groups like two groups maybe three groups at a time but 10 groups just that's crazy and then to blame the people, your customers, that's even crazier. Okay. So it was congested. And really, I thought we were in line a long time. But we it wasn't so bad, to be quite honest. We were from the time we got, uh, you know, got our stuff and started moving to the time we were in a car. It was an hour. Okay. So it wasn't as bad as I thought it was, but it was aggravating and, you know, people are pushing and it's just not pleasant. Um, I can tell you that once you get, you know, off the gangway, there's two lines. There's an elevator line and a, um, escalator line. If you can do the escalator line, do it. It was so much faster than this, the elevator line. That line was way back. It was starting to back up into the gangway, which isn't safe. Um, but so if you can do an escalator, they basically just were saying, if you have one hand free, do the escalator. And it was just much faster. Um, then you go down to the bottom of the, the, the port building, grab your luggage. No problem there. Everything was good. You go through customs. Customs was a su super easy. They've done away with custom forms. 
Um, you only have to fill them out if you've done over what you're supposed to do, which is like $800 more than one bottle of liquor, more than a hundred cigars and something else. I don't remember, but they'll, they'll tell you that, but you don't have to do it. And the gentleman was, the custom agent was very friendly to us, just asked us, you know, what we bought. We had only bought one bottle of liquor and a couple t-shirts. So we were in and out, we were out. Um, and then you walk out the building and across just i don't know you go across where the nautilus goes in and down there's down the ramp which is kind of weird but it was trying to keep it out of the flow um and the shuttle bus pulled up within a couple minutes and we were gone so that wasn't as bad an hour's not bad i don't think it could have went smoother they could have not called 10 they could have and i'm sure if i was on express I'd be very angry if I didn't get off the bus to 10.30. 10, I'm sorry, 10.43 is what the what I confirmed. So 10.43 is crazy. Um, so I guess my last point, or let me summarize. First of all, if you're going out of Norfolk, do whatever you can do to be dropped off. If you are local, semi-local, you have relatives, friends in Norfolk, get dropped off. Okay, simple. Um, avoid the parking lot. No other way to say it. Do not do the parking lot. Or if you do the parking lot, Uber from the parking lot. Do not get in that line for the shuttle buses. Just a nightmare. Um, also, some line, people had lines getting into the parking lot. So that's probably not even the suggestion that I'm going to try next time. Um, I did list some parking lots that people use successfully. I would just tell you to research it yourself and make sure you're comfortable where it is and have a plan. Um, lastly, and probably the most important because of this express nightmare is do not book an early flight if you're flying in because that 1043 was leaving the thing. If she had an hour, it would be 12 o'clock before um, they're probably pulling out of the parking lot. So if you are flying out of Norfolk, do not do an early flight because it's probably not going to work to your advantage because you don't pick your muster stations. Mine happened to be B3 and they were called just about 10 minutes before I was called. So that was about 9, uh, 30. They would have been called probably somewhere around 9 30 you know so just an FYI I uh, I would just not park in the parking lot if you fly in fly do a later flight uh, and do your research about the other parking lots so yes I do Norfolk again just with some a little bit more research and not using that parking lot I am really excited to see, you know, a cruise out of Norfolk, and I hope that there's going to be more. I hope there's going to be more options of, of cruise lines leaving from there, um, because like I said, it takes me like two, fifth, two hours and 15 minutes, two hours, 30, depending on traffic. If we stop um, to get to Norfolk, so that's really great for me. I can tell you that most of the people that I met on board were uh, Virginia. Maryland, North Carolina people, people who could drive uh, within four hours probably. So I'm not sure there were a lot of people flying. Um, did meet one or two that flew, but most of them drove, which is probably the other problem with the parking lot situation, that it is a port that is heavy on people uh, driving. But Norfolk, check out Baltimore because... Baltimore does it right, and most of those people drive, I believe. So that's my 411 or Norfolk. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below. I'll answer them. Um, I had an awful time um, getting answers to questions I had or anybody who had even been out of Norfolk since they restarted. So I'd be happy to answer your questions. So if this was helpful in any way, please like, 
and subscribe. And if you want to know more about the magic, um, I'll have more videos coming out of what we did. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm not big on vlogging. Um, they're more informational like this, but I have some short videos that I'll have and some information and my review of the magic. So stay tuned, subscribe, like, thanks. So, and then here's the line. So the line is pretty long and it's hot out here. The buses are big though. Hopefully once the buses get ready to load, we'll go fast.